Hey, middle schoolers. This is chapter six, lesson seven, the last lesson in chapter six. Uh, today we're going to be working with equivalent expressions. We're going to be uh, changing expressions using properties and combining like terms, things that we've uh, already talked about in this uh, chapter. We're going to be combining a few ideas. Uh, so the first kind of a problem I want to look at is simplifying a one variable expression. So simplify a one variable expression. So these expressions are only going to have a single variable. And I've got two examples we're going to do. The first one is 2 times 8x. And the second expression is 5x plus 9 plus 2x. So we are going to simplify these two expressions. The first one, 2 times 8x, I'm going to write it right here, 2 times 8x. Now remember, a number right next to a parentheses means they're being multiplied. Uh, and 8 with a variable right next to it a coefficient and a variable, they're being multiplied together as well. So really, I could rewrite this expression. I could rewrite it like this. 2, and this means 8 times x. I could do 8 dot x. Okay, all I did was rewrite it. Different way of showing multiplication. 8x, 8 times x. And I could also put a dot right here because this means two times this thing. Uh, now, I could use the associative property to regroup these parentheses. Right here, we've got two times eight times x inside parentheses. I can use the associative property to regroup the two times the eight. And this would be the associative property from here to here. And now, now I can multiply the 2 times 8 and get 16 times x. Remember, that means they're being multiplied. So this expression simplifies to 16x. All of these are equivalent expressions. They are all different ways of saying the same thing. 2 times 8x, 2 times 8 times x, 2 times 8 times x, 16x. This, These are all equivalent, and we've simplified this expression down to 16x. The other example, 5x plus 9 plus 2x, Uh, I could use, in this expression, I could use the commutative property to switch the order of these two. Remember, the commutative property says a plus b is equal to b plus a. I can change the order of the 9 and the 2. does not matter if I'm adding. doesn't matter the order. So I could rewrite this expression to that. Again, equivalent expressions, these are completely equivalent. Okay, same thing. Now I've got x, 5x's combined with 2x's. I can combine those like terms. Um, if I were building a model, these would be 5 fries plus 2 fries. So 7x plus 9. Here is this expression simplified. 5x plus 9 plus 2x simplifies to 7x plus 9. Uh, 
a common, common mistake that kids make is they want to now combine the 7 and the 9 and call it uh, 16x. You, you cannot do that. Uh, constants cannot be combined with a, ter a term with a variable. And if we were modeling, it would be fries and nuggets. Those can't be combined. So here's uh, two examples simplifying a one variable expression. What about if we have two variables? That's what we're going to look at next. Some examples where we have two variables. Simplify two variable equations. Two variable expressions, I should say, not equations. Simplify two variable expressions. And again, I've got two more examples. Uh, 12y. 12y plus 3x plus 5y. This expression has two variables. It has x as a variable and it has y as a variable. And here is another example. 4 times 2x plus y. All right, let's work at simplifying these two expressions. So I'll do the first one here, 12y plus 3x plus 5y. Similar to this, ex simplifying this expression, I'm going to use the commutative property to switch the order of these two. So I'm going to rewrite that 12y plus 5y plus 3x. All I did was switch these two. Now I've got like terms. My y's can be combined. 12y put together with 5y makes 17y plus 3x. That's as much as I can simplify this expression. 17y plus 3x. I cannot combine x's with y's. So that's, that's as far as I can go on that one. 4 times the, quanti the sum 2x plus y. Now, simplifying this expression, this one is a little tricky, but you may be able to recognize that I can use the distributive property on this one. Uh, a, this would be the A, this term would be the B, and this term would be the C. So that's the a part of the distributive property, and I can distribute 4 times 2x, and I can also do 4 times y. Just like here, I could do a times b plus a times c. So on this expression, what I'm doing is using the distributive property, and 4 times 2x, that is going to turn into 8x, plus 4 distributed or multiplied by the y, is going to make 4y. So this expression here simplifies to 8x plus 4y. And the other part of the distributive property says this. I'll write it right here. You can do a times b plus a times c. That is what I did uh, using the distributive property. I went from this to this. a times b, 4 times 2x is 8x, plus a times c, which is 4 times y, which is 4y. Uh, this is probably one of the trickiest problems for sixth graders, is getting that pattern down of the distributive property. Um, again, go back to your notes. Be sure to ask and look at examples. Uh, the key is doing a bunch of problems until you recognize that pattern. a times b 
plus a times c is the distributive property. Okay, the last uh, example we're going to look at today is factor the expression twenty seven x plus eighteen y. So a few lessons back, we did this, we factored an expression without any variables. It was just numbers, okay? But really the idea is very similar, but now we're just gonna add a variable to it. Here is what we want our, again, this is a sum. I wanna change it into, uh, factor means multiplying, so I want to rewrite this as a factor. This times a sum. Something times something. Here I'm going to go from a sum to a factor. This is what I want my answer to look like. So I'm going to highlight that just like I did before. If it says factor the expression, you're going to want your answer to look something it should look like this. That's the structure that it should look like. And now it's just like what we did before uh, with one new thing. So 27x. Think back to when we did this with just numbers. We did a factor tree. Okay. Over here I'm going to write down the structure that I want my answer to be in. I want my answer to look like this. I already know that that's what I'm going to I'm going to get at the end. 27x. How can I make 27? How does it break down? 9 times 3. 3 can't break down anymore. 9 does break down into 3 times 3. So I've got 3 threes in my factorization. 3 times 3 times 3 and now the thing that's new with uh, the variables, I have to add that variable, times x. 3 times 3 times 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, times x, 27x. And I'm going to do the same thing with 18y. I need a factor tree for 18. How can I make 18? Well, I can do 9 times 2. 2 doesn't break down. How does 9 break down? 3 times 3. Now I put all my factors in order. 2 times 3 times 3 times y. There's also a y. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 times y is 18y. So this part, the variable, is the only thing that's different from when we factored expressions before. These have variables. We, before when we did this, it was just numbers. But other than that, the process is the same. So now I'm going to look at what are my common factors in this factorization and this one. This 3 and this 3 match up. That 3 and that 3. And that those common factors that we pulled out, those go right here. 3 times 3 makes 9. So here's how I got that 9. I used the common factors. Well, now, what do I have left on the 27x? I've got 3x left. That goes right here. What do I have left on 18y? I've got 2 times y left over here. That becomes 2y because a number right next to a variable means they're being multiplied 3 times x, 3 times x, 
2y, 2 times y, 2 times y. So let's just color code all of this. I already got that on there. So the 3x came from right here. The 2y came from right here. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Okay. So factor the expression. If it's got a variable, it's really hardly any different from when we factored uh, an expression without a variable. We can just add the variable, and there it is. Here it is in our factorization, and it's going to be in our uh, factor the expression as well. All right. Well, this does it for lesson seven. Uh, there are some tricky things in, uh, in this lesson especially right here and also this one. Um, a lot of kids need some extra help by those. Be sure to check the binder, talk in your table groups, and of course ask me for help uh, during class. All right, uh, that does it for chapter six. We are done with chapter six. Your test is coming soon. Here is the hidden treasure for our last lesson. Chapter six, uh, lesson seven. There's the hidden treasure. If you can solve that, and you've got uh, all the note pages for chapter six, and you've got the assignment completed, you could be the hidden treasure winner. Hidden treasure winner. Uh, all right, go back through your notes, study, 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 and rewatch any lessons when uh, you don't understand your notes. Uh, that's it. I will see you soon.